In this video, we're going to be checking out the Omni Mic. And we're going to actually measure up the sound on the speakers that I put together. That guy back there versus uh, the Polk Audio. And we'll get two different uh, audio graphs and we'll kind of see how that looks. To start out, I'm just going to set this thing up. I've already installed the uh, software on my computer to make sure that there's no audio sampling or any kind of adjustments happening in the Marantz receiver. I'm going to be running it right through the uh, app. It's going to be right from my phone with the sound files that actually came with the Omni mic. So I'll plug this thing in. It comes with a uh, USB cable that's nice and long, which is great. And uh, the mic comes with a little tiny stand. So we'll set up the mic. We'll uh, get it there and uh, we'll do some measurements. To set this thing up, I uh, kind of mounted it roughly at head height where I listen typically when I'm listening to music and uh, pointed it straight at the speakers. I know the standard measurement says it's supposed to be uh, one meter, but this is not for audio sampling. It's just for audio quality and I'm concerned about that most in my listening position. So that's where I've got it set up. I'll go ahead and launch the uh, software and uh, we'll get the test tones going. And uh, we'll show you guys the uh, graphs of what that looks like. Okay, as you can see here, this mic is already set up. It's live. This is what the screen looks like. All right, the uh, Rotel is connected there. You can see it on my phone. The test tracks, I just downloaded them and sent them to my phone. So that's how I'm going to be playing those. So let's see what that sounds like. Uh, warning, I will leave this part in here so you can see me capture the live graphs, but uh, it's going to be loud and these tones are pretty annoying. Okay, everything is set up. The uh, first speaker that I'm going to test is going to be the Polk Audio speaker, and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll play that test tone. Okay, I've got it curved there, so let's save that and uh, just make sure it opens up in a viewer. Save that puppy. All right, so we got the uh, pull curve there, switched it over to the speaker that I built. We'll do another sample here and then we can uh, go ahead and compare the two. All right, we got that curve, we got that sampled, and just out of curiosity here, I'm gonna do the two together to see what that gives because that's the one I've been enjoying listening to the most. So uh, we'll switch that other channel back on and we'll let's capture that. All right, both of them are captured. Let's uh, check out these results. Pretty curious to see what this is gonna look like. We can close the, oh, I'll just minimize that for now. So this is both together. Here's the sound graph. Oh, it switched to home belt. There's both. Here's the Polk. All right, and here's the speaker that I built. So there you can see all three together, this home built one for a first build. That's a pretty flat response, not as flat as the Polk. A little bit of a rise here in the 50 Hertz-ish range and a little bit of a dip here in about the 80, which is kind of makes sense based on the uh, crossover designer XM. This kind of showed this as well. We can pull that back up. 
and take a look at that as well. Let's change the scale here so we can see it. Oh, and these components are no longer in there. We're going to just uh, short this guy. And we'll take that out. So this dip, according to XSIM, is in the uh, 20, 30, 40, 50-ish, 50, 60, 70 range. So that's probably not that far off, actually. Here's the home belt. Here's the graph. This is the actual versus what we got. There's a 20. So the 20 is actually in better shape, but there definitely is a dip kind of as shown in XM, but not very far off uh, according to what we designed and what we built or what I designed and what I built here. So pretty impressed with that. That makes me much more confident with building uh, speakers based on the specs that the manufacturer provides. So I'm pretty curious uh, how I can take this further. So as I mentioned in my previous video, what I was thinking of doing is somewhere, I think what I would do in the future is I would take the crossover point of this speaker and to show you better where that is. All right, there's uh oh, that's driver only. We don't want that. We want the actual system one and two. Perfect, it's better. So here you can see that I've kept this whole part in the crossover curve and I think this speaker would be best off if I would cut it off somewhere around the 100 hertz range in here and have that to more of a bass driver. So I think that's what I would do on my next build. I would try to cover this band better, the really low frequencies with a different kind of a sub, something that's gonna move a little more air and then use this for a mid-channel and put some kind of a curve like this in here. But the rest of it, based on the uh, frequency response that we just got there, pretty happy with all of this. Like, uh, that's pretty good. If I tame this crossover point right in this uh, 100 to 200 range here, cross it over here and put a sub in here, it's going to fill in that void. I think, anyway. That's my theory, so that's what I'm going to be doing for the second build or the next build that I'm going to try to come up with uh, with the other components. I don't know if I'll necessarily go as big as this one. Probably an 8 or 7 inch uh, woofer driver and then uh, maybe even keep the same mid. I don't know. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do for the next round but uh, learned a lot. Learned a ton. Uh, Omni mic. This is awesome that I can get all the graphs and measurement and what I'm really impressed with is the theory actually kind of gets very close to the actual. So that's good stuff. Whether or not I should take these speakers now, measure them independently, get my graph, and then build a crossover based on what the actual speaker is doing, uh, that's uh, for another time when I get further on in this. But at least this gives me a really good starting point. I think I have a, at least a basic understanding on how I can actually build my first three-way speaker. So if you wanna see how that goes together or her, uh, how that whole process happens, I will leave a video here with that when that's uh, ready to go.